Astronomy studies the universe and all that it contains, whereas vexillology is the study of flags, their colors, symbols, and meaning. A national flag is designed with specific meaning for its colors and symbols, typically used as an identity to a geography, its people, and their values. So flags are symbols of national pride. Can this national pride meet astronomy? Yes, for obvious reasons, some flag designers have used astronomical objects to make a link between our world and the sky above. Hello world, this is Praveen Suryamanshi, your virtual guide for the journey into the space and time. As we take pride in our motherland and celebrate the national flag. Similarly, why can't we take pride in our mother earth and celebrate the flag of our planet? I mean, not this flag of United Nations, but the real flag of the earth. This flag of the earth from 1969 is inspired from the Apollo 8 mission, when for the first time, humans have seen and photographed the earth in its full form. The famous Earthrise footage from the mission changed the way we look at our planet. In that moment of surpassing technological triumph, men turn their thoughts toward home and humanity. Seeing in that far perspective that man's destiny on Earth is not divisible, telling us that however far we reach into the cosmos, our destiny lies not in the stars, but on Earth itself, in our own hands in our own hearts. Well, as I viewed uh, the Earth over the stark lunar horizon, it struck me as a bit ironic that though we had trained uh, and were focused on going to the moon to discover the moon, what we really discovered was the Earth. In the coming years, it led to the foundation of Earth Day and various environmental protection laws were passed. Eventually, people came up with a new design for the flag of the Earth. This particular design consists of a blue circle representing the Earth in the center. A segment of large yellow circle represents the Sun and small white circle for the Moon and all on a black background of space. It is particularly popular among scientists of SETI, the search for extraterrestrial intelligence and still flies at Ohio State University's radio observatory. Now, let's get back to the national flags. Have you ever wondered why do so many flags have sun, moon and stars on them? And few flags have a group of stars in a specific pattern. If you look at Brazilian flag, a nation crazy for football make us think of the big blue circle in the middle as a ball, but it's actually a sky map. A sports crazy nation Australia features an actual constellation on its flag. So does New Zealand and few other countries and states. Before decoding these special flags of astronomical features, let us quickly look into the simple flags featuring the sun, moon and stars. As you know, the sun is the closest star to us. We get light and heat from it. Life on the earth would be impossible without it. This recognition is not modern thought, but carried by our ancestors across the world, which is reflected in their culture and belief system. So few countries use a flag to remind the heritage of the land. The best examples are Argentina, Peru and Equator, which were the cradles of Inca civilization, who believed that they were created by the sun god. The Argentina flag with blue and white bands represents the sky and clouds, whereas the sun symbolizes the Incan sun god. The flag of Peru, not today's flag, but during the struggle for independence of Peru, the flag was hoisted with the golden sun representing the Inca sun god. Now moving on to Equator, when you look closely at the coat of arms of the flag, we see a golden sun on top, probably representing the Inca sun god. That's fine, but what catches my attention is that the sun is surrounded by the band of zodiac signs for constellation Aries, Taurus, Gemini and Cancer, which shows the movement of the sun through them during the months of March to July to symbolize the duration of the mass revolution in 1845 that ended 15 years of foreign domination in Equator. Now that's interesting. But disappointingly, it's not astronomically accurate with an offset of almost a month because the flag designers didn't consider the precession of the Earth. More on this in another video. Similarly, most countries recognize the importance of our star, so they simply display an image of the sun representing philosophical values without much deeper meaning to it. Such as the flags of Japan, Bangladesh, Antigua and Barbuda 
Kazakhstan, Namibia, Nepal, Greenland, Tibet, and the list goes on. Although there are few flags with additional meaning, such as Kyrgyzstan, in which the sun's 40 rays represents the 40 tribes of the region united as a single nation, and Taiwan with 12 rays of the sun symbolizes the 12 months of the year and further division of time. Now let's shift our focus on our closest celestial neighbor and look at some flags bearing the moon. As you know, the crescent moon and the star symbol is widely associated with Islam, but in fact, predates Islam by thousands of years. The city of Byzantium, today's Istanbul, adopted the crescent moon and its symbol long before the birth of Islam. The design of crescent moon on flags is often exaggerated, with its points extending out far more than they actually appear in the sky, resembling more of a crescent sun during a solar eclipse than an actual lunar crescent. The position of the star or Venus on the inside of the moon is also symbolic, but in reality, they would be hidden by the moon in the sky, as the invisible lunar disk blocks them. Anyhow, the crescent moon and stars on the flags held religious and cultural significance rather than astronomical, and it is associated with the worship of the moon goddess, also probably the importance of lunar calendar in Islam. If you look at these flags, all of them have a moon oriented upright in C shape except the crescent moon on the flag of Pakistan. As we stand on the spherical earth, the moon's orientation changes as we observe from different parts of the earth. Now, when we simulate the observing conditions of the crescent moon from Pakistan with a mid-latitude of 30 degrees, it is observed that the orientation of the rising moon in its crescent phase that falls before the sunrise exactly matches with that of the orientation of the flag. That may not be intentional, but quite interesting. Now, let's move on to the stars. Among star-bearing flags, few flags indicate the country's geographical location. For example, the Star of Marshall Islands flag represents the position of this island nation 7 degrees north of the equator. The star's 24 rays stand for the number of districts. Similarly, on the flag of the island nation Nauru, the position of the star depicts the country's geographical position 1 degree below the equator. Its 12 points indicate the island's 12 original tribes. There are many flags that bear one or more stars but have no connection to astronomy. The stars may represent a number of states, countries or of tribes among others but do not symbolize actual stars. Such as Cape Verde Islands, Abkhazia, European Union countries, United States and so on. The US flag may not have actual stars but one of its states do feature actual stars. The flag of Alaska has the North Star Polaris on top which is an appropriate symbol for the state as the northmost part of the United States, along with the stars of the Big Dipper, a popularly known pattern across the world, which is known as Saptarshi Mandal here in India. And it is a part of larger constellation called Alsa Major, which symbolizes a bear and animal indigenous to Alaska. As depicted on the flag, its stars can be used as a guide by the novice to locate Polaris known as Dhruvatara here in India, and determine the true north, which varies significantly from magnetic north shown by a compass. Due to the Arizona state's proximity to the North Pole, the sailors cannot navigate using compasses. So they have to rely on Big Dipper and Polaris to find true north. Because the true north, also called the geographical north, is determined by the rotation of the Earth, which connects the North and South Poles. Whereas the magnetic North Pole is a point where the northern lines of Earth's magnetic field points vertically downwards. This North magnetic pole moves over time as per the changes in the interior of the Earth. The difference between geographical and magnetic North Pole today is about 500 kilometers. Unlike Polaris, as a North Star, the Southern Hemisphere lacks a bright South Pole star. So they had given the importance to a constellation called Southern Cross for celestial navigation. Draw an imaginary line from the top of Southern Cross to the bottom and extend it four times. Now the end point reaches the South Celestial Pole. Drop a vertical line from this point to the horizon that places due south which explains its prominence on Southern Hemisphere flags, such as Australia, New Zealand, Papua New Guinea, Samoa, a state flag of Palau, a regional flag in Antarctica, and various regional flags of Chile, a country housing various astronomical observatories. And last but not the least, Brazil, an astronomer's favorite flag, which contains not only Southern Cross, but various other constellations and stars, making it the only flag with a sky map. Brazil got independence in 1822, but it didn't become a republic until 15 November 1889. The flag reflects the sky over the city of Rio de Janeiro on this day of proclamation of the republic, 
featuring nine different constellations and 27 stars, representing the Brazilian states and the capital. The stars are sized in proportion relative to its geographical size with five different magnitudes, making it one of the most complicated national flags to construct. The creators of the flag was intended to represent the stars in the sky at the capital of Rio de Janeiro at 8.30 in the morning on 15 November 1889. The moment at which the constellation of Southern Cross was on meridian of Rio de Janeiro and the longer arm of the cross was vertical. Indicated by number 6 in this diagram of the circular sky part of the flag. To the south of it, Polaris Australis, a faint south pole star, number 7, representing the federal district. The motto, Order and Progress, appears on a band indicating the ecliptic, which is the plane of the solar system. A single star lies above this band, showing the largest northern state of Para, which crosses the equator. The largest state Amazonas also crosses the equator, but as it is mostly below the equator, the state is indicated with the star Procyon in the Canis Major constellation, which is indicated by number 1 on the diagram lying below the band. There are two small states which lie mostly above the equator, but as they were recently formed, the stars indicating them are added as a small stars part of the Canis Major constellation indicated by number 2. There are two states of Brazil through which the Tropic of Capricorn passes, but one state adopted the flag indicating its geographical location. The state flag of Parana has a large white stripe which symbolizes the Tropic of Capricorn bearing a blue circle with the five stars of Southern Cross. As I said, the flag reflects the sky over the city of Rio de Janeiro on the day of declaration of the Republic. Now when we compare the flag with actual simulated sky over the capital on that date, it is noticed that the sky map on the flag is a mirror image of the actual sky. Why so? Upon some research, we came to know that the flag portrays the sky as it would be seen by an imaginary observer at an infinite distance above Rio de Janeiro, standing outside the imaginary celestial sphere on which stars are projected, probably the God's point of view. The Brazil's flag is a perfect example of a reflection of art, science and philosophy. Being Indian, I was curious to know if there is any history of Indian flags which had astronomical significance. Surprisingly, not one, but there are two flags with astronomical features. As you know, India's current flag does not display any astronomical features. However, during British Raj in the early 1900s, then acting Viceroy suggested an Indian national flag to be proposed. Soon in 1904, an Anglo-Indian weekly newspaper put forward a colourful proposal for India, which bore the constellation of Orion, one of the most recognisable star patterns known throughout the world. The ancient Greeks and Romans saw the hunter Orion in the sky. We Indians saw it as Kal Purush and Nataraja, the cosmic dancer, and also a deer known as Mriga, with its head stars named Mriga Shirsha, which is one of 27 significant nakshatras marking the arrival of monsoon when the sun enters the realm of this star, an important event and celebration for Indian farmers even today. Now, talking about the flag, the stars of the constellation Orion represented united India with its provinces and states, and the horizontal band of colors indicated religious unity. During the Home Rule movement in 1917, a flag used known as the Home Rule flag to set the stage for the independence movement under the leadership of Annie Besant and Balagangadha Tilak. The flag had a crescent moon and a seven-pointed star, along with seven stars arranged as in Saptarshi Mandal, the stars of Big Dipper, that sought to unite the multitude of castes and races within the country. With this, we understand that although seafaring and celestial navigation but the dominant means of exploration and commerce in both hemispheres, the modern national flags of Northern Hemisphere do not feature astronomical constellations and guiding stars. A reason might be centuries of wars and conflicts among nations. The Northern flags seem intent on reflecting intense local nationalistic pride, underlying differences between neighbors rather than sharing a common symbol. While in the Southern Hemisphere, the isolation between the countries south of the equator might have brought about a sense of solidarity and heavenly symbol that united them. Let's take pride in our nation, its flag, culture and values. But at the same time, let us unite as a common species living on a single planet. That's it for now. Hope you enjoyed the video and learned a lot. Before going, here is a question for you to think on. If you are given a chance to redesign the flag of your country, how would you design it and what it signifies? Comment your responses and share your design on our social media pages, links in the description. As always, thanks for giving your space and time.